Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful day today. Reverend Sisters, Fathers, Risha Butterly Irish Rail, Mayor of Doherty, Councillor Paul Bell, Deputy Fergus O'Dowd, Members of the Rathus, Louth County Council, Historian Anthony Jordan, my daughter Bernadine and her fiancé Adrian, and all of you ladies and gentlemen. I wish to thank Rita of Irish Rail and our lovely Rosaline in Westport for giving me this wonderful honour to commemorate this great, good and noble son of Westport and of Ireland, my granduncle, Major John McBride. Before I talk about Major John, I would like to let you know I love travelling by train. The railway holds very happy memories for me. 41 years ago, I first met my Mr. Wonderful Seamus on the train from Houston Station to Kent Station in Galway. So we have great reason to be um, grateful to Irish Rail. <laughs> Major John McBride was the youngest of five sons, born to Honoria Gill and Captain Patrick McBride on the 7th of May, 1868 at Westport Quay. Major John and his brother Joseph married two half-sisters. Major John married Maud Gunn, and Joseph, his brother, married her half-sister Eileen. Eileen and Joseph are my granny and granddad. They had five children also, four daughters and one son, my dad, Irk McBride. I recall my granny, my dad and my aunts reminiscing how they loved when Uncle John came to stay with them at their home, Mallow Cottage, Westport. He always made them laugh with the stories of the Boer War, soldiers and guns, and his sailing adventures. Seemingly everybody who came in touch with Major John loved his gentle personality and his sense of humour. Major John married Maud Gunn. They had one son, Sean McBride, born 1904. Sean was an international criminal lawyer and an Irish government minister in the inter-party government in 1948. Sean founded many international organisations and was a prominent figure worldwide. He started off first receiving his first Holy Communion from St. Pius X in the Vatican in Rome, so not many would have that claim. Sean is the only recipient of both the Nobel Prize and the Lenin Peace Prize, and he was the first non-American to receive the gold medal for peace and justice. He drew up the 12 McBride principles, which have been adopted by the American government and by Northern Irish government. Sean stayed with us throughout his life many, many times, and he is <coughs> godfather to our daughter Una. Not only would Major John be so proud of his son, he would honour him greatly. Major John died for this immutable, immutable right of nationhood, but for the final 20 years of his short life, he dreamt and wrote of freedom. He was executed two days before his 48th birthday. <coughs> he travelled far and wide and spoke privately and publicly of the cause of breaking the stranglehold, stranglehold which England had on Ireland and its people for 700 years. He was a man of action and words. As well as being brave, fearless, noble and <coughs> courageous, Sean MacGillabrija was very kind and spiritual. A man of deep faith, loved by all who came in contact with him. Father Augustine recalls in the book Last Words by Pierish MacLachlan. He emptied his pockets of whatever silver and copper and asked me to give them to the poor and his rosary beads to his mother in Westport. Major John and his comrades were visionaries and heroes in the true sense of the word. Those brave men and women set a course for Ireland to become a republic and for the freedom of every man, woman and child. They should be honoured and valued and the ideals of the proclamation cherished forever. In Westport, 31 men marched 
on the 8th of May in protest of Major John's execution. Two of those were his brother Joseph and his first cousin, Joe Gill. It's incredible to think that a hundred years ago, his mother, Honoria McBride, heard the news from an 11-year-old boy, uh, Tommy Heavey, that her son was executed. Three days later, she heard her son, Joseph, my grandfather, was arrested and sent to Prongook Prison in Wales, leaving my granny and five children behind. He did not return until Christmas Day of that year. I believe personally, Major John, because of his military expertise in the Boer War, that he was the most wanted of Irishmen by the British for years up to his inevitable execution. I will conclude by saying every true Irish person should be proud of Major John McBride, be thankful for him and honour him and all his comrades. In Kilmainham Jail on May the 5th, 1916, he said, I have locked down the muzzles of too many guns in the South African war to fear death. And now, please carry out your sentence. Thank you.